Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with the Sunday evening wrap-up edition of the weekend of our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, a beautiful Sunday evening in progress after a pretty hot day out there. And as we go into the course of the next couple of days, we're looking at some pretty hot numbers all the way on through. So getting back to the classroom as we head into the next few days and, of course, all the extracurricular activities going on after school events outdoors, you're going to want to pay very close attention to the forecast and how things are going out there. Football, soccer, baseball, marching band season, whatever you've got going on out there, you're going to want to pay attention because we're looking at some dangerously hot weather for being outdoors for long periods of time and the possibility of maybe some thunderstorms out there as well. If you're joining us tonight, please let us know where you're in town from. Give us an idea as to where you're uh, taking a look at our netcast from, take a look around the area and give us an idea city, state, and of course if you have any uh, weather reports, we'd love to see more about that. Did you get any rain from the showers and thunderstorms that popped up across the area earlier? What was your high temperature today? Which direction are the winds blowing? Let's do some amateur meteorology and see what's going on. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll take a look at burn bans and wildfire danger in the Mid-South area. It's a lot better than what it is out west, but we still have to monitor that. Hurricanes in the Pacific and a new storm system in the Atlantic. Does anything have any major bearing on us here in the southeast United States or around the Mid-South? We'll take a look at that as well. And more of your weather pictures and some dynamic sunset shots for tonight. Absolutely gorgeous out there for this evening. We'll take a closer look at that coming up in just a little bit. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, red bar in the bottom of your screen. That's the forecast scrolling on by, and it's also available here at wreg.com slash weather. Let's go ahead and get going tonight and show you what's going on for the school day forecast into tomorrow, and it is going to be a toasty one as the kids, the teachers, and the administrators get back into the classroom and the school buildings. Got a chance of a few showers and thunderstorms again. This is where we're going to have to monitor what's happening for the forecast into and around the area of the afternoon and evening hours. Ronnie Williams, 83 in Collierville. Thank you very much for that one. Paulette Morrow, 81, hot and clear in New Bern, Tennessee. Thank you very much for that. Dyersburg, no rain today. Kathy Hansford, thank you very much uh, for that one. Nancy Lee Laster, so tired of the hot weather. Yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of like that at this point in time. Rain last night and a short rain today in Savannah, Tennessee. Brooke White Gray, thank you very much for that. And everybody else checking in uh, for this evening as well. The main problem we're going to have, again, is going to be the temperatures into the next few days. So again, football practice, marching band practice, anything that gets the kids outdoors baking in that sunshine when there is sunshine is going to be dangerous. So definitely want to take breaks, lots of water, monitor who's, again, having difficulties into the shade, into the air conditioning. The whole safety thing applies, so let's be careful out there as we head into the course of the next several days. Next 24 hours really holds out little hope of anything involving cooler weather. Mid to upper 70s for low temperatures, and that's for the metro area. Northwest Tennessee, northeast Arkansas, you could see temperatures main, maybe in the lower to mid 70s, but that's going to be about it. Official high temperature today, 90, average of 92. Again, this is about as typical August as you can get for this time of the year. So some very warm temperatures out there. Not overly hot, but once again, we continue again to see some very statistically normal temperatures for this time of the year. Anything hotter than this coming up, we'll tell you coming up in just a little bit here. 82 feels like 87 in Houston, Mississippi. Scott Jarvis, uh, thank you very much for that. William Skage, 87 in Michigan. A little toasty for up there around the Great Lakes. 79 in, let's see, is it Medina or Medina, Tennessee? A Amy Autry, want to make certain I'm pronouncing that correctly on that. And thanks to everybody else checking in. Uh, Chris Estes, AC, went out on Thursday. I'm very sorry about that. Two more days without AC, no AC, but no rain, but need some on here. Charles Edward Stanton, hot in North Carolina. Can't wait until you get back home to Milwaukee. Hope it's cool there by the time you get up in that direction. Overnight, again, maybe a chance of a thunderstorm, but I think most of that should quit after about 10 p.m. I would not be surprised to hear a rumble of thunder toward tomorrow morning, so something to think about there. This is what it looks like around Yosemite. The Ferguson fire has moved into the park, and most of the area, including the valley, has been closed off to traffic because of the fact that there's just so much smoke 
smoke and all kinds of other problems out there with visibility. We'll take a look at our fire danger coming up here in just a little bit. Sunset from Ole Miss around the track and field facility. Beautiful conditions out there for tonight and a few showers and thunderstorms trying to pop up from the Hilton East Memphis camera. Hang on a second. That is not right. That's the West Memphis camera. How did that happen? See if we can get there. We go. That's Hilton East Memphis camera, and quite a nice view out there tonight. Spectacular sunsets. And again, if you've got those weather pictures out there, we would definitely love to see them. So drop them to my Facebook page or email them to me, and we'd love to have you along again with your pictures out there. We'll show you some of your weather pictures coming up here uh, in just a little bit. But in the meantime, this is what it looks like into around portions of the area there. And now we've got to go back to West Memphis. Who is messing with my settings? Hang on one second here and. Where did it go? It was here a second ago. There we go. West Memphis, Arkansas. Really, I should double. I, I got to start coming to rehearsal more often. Uh, looking again at West Memphis, some nice clouds out there, but illuminated quite nicely after sunset and very quiet conditions here. 81 degrees in West Memphis at this point in time. Thomas W. Foy watching from Kermit, West Virginia. I don't think I've been there in many a year. Coming home tomorrow. Uh, it's okay. Thanks a lot for stopping by for your forecast, even though you can't uh, watch for the whole thing for right now. Walter Hale, good excuse to lay in the hammock and grade papers this week. Maybe that's when I need to get my wife as a hammock so she can take care of her stuff outside. But uh, she is uh, an instructional technology coach and not a science teacher anymore. But thank you very much uh, for that one. 116 degrees in Arizona today. Shaney Tell Bella Weathersby Cook. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Russ Rossier Harris Rudd. Thank you very much for the uh, kind words from around Tupelo, Mississippi. Showers and thunderstorms. That was earlier portions of northwest Tennessee. Not much of anything left over at this point. A few thunderstorms around Bolivar, but those did a pretty good job of falling apart. And outside of some showers and thunderstorms around Tupelo, there's not that much left of any activity. Again, I would not be surprised to see some of this type of activity a little closer into the Mid-South throughout the rest of the evening, but so far we're just getting some scattered light activity, and that's about it on Storm Tracker 3S radar, including that heavier stuff that was fall falling over parts of northeast Arkansas earlier tonight. Even though it's after sunset, we still have a heat index. Temperatures back in the lower to mid-90s, especially and in and around portions of U of M Earth Sciences at this time. Eddie Goss, welcome to the show. Retired from News Channel 3, one of the best production people we have ever had here. Welcome, Mr. Goss, and Thanks for stopping on by uh, for tonight. Welcome to the show here for this evening. Mark McKee, yeah, I wish I could blame more on Hal Gurney and his uh, directing stuff, but yeah, that was definitely a David Letterman reference. Good catch on that one for there. Tanya Hopkins, Springfield, watching from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hopefully it's a little uh, cooler up that direction. And April Hence, 81 degrees. Uh, some clouds in Eureka Springs, Mississippi. Thank you for tuning on in. Temperatures again over the next couple of days. Not much good news there. Now the computers again through about News Channel 3 at 10, throwing some chances of showers and thunderstorms out there, but those should be kind of dwindling as we head into around the early morning hours tomorrow. But unfortunately for the later schools starting at about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, there could be maybe some showers popping up. And unfortunately, as we go into the rest of the day, especially lunchtime and afterwards, that's where we see, again, those chances of showers and thunderstorms. So there could be some mad dashes between the school building and the car bus rider line out there. So maybe a little bit of some rain protection with a rain jacket or an umbrella taking along with you just in case, especially for the kids who are walking home. You might need that. But please remember, again, outdoor activities. When thunder roars, go indoors. Let's make certain everybody stays safe. We clear out the chances of rainfall by News Channel 3 at 10 tomorrow tomorrow night and into Tuesday morning. And then through the rest of the week, we just start the whole thing all over again. Severe threat for tonight is well to the north of the area, mid-south down here, and a slight risk from west of Chicago back to the northwest of Denver. So we're not seeing anything in the way of severe weather here. Likewise, into tomorrow, the threat is well back to our north. Looks like Great Lakes could be seeing a lot more problems there. And then also into and around the rest of this next week, Tuesday into Wednesday, a mod marginal chance of severe weather. Weather, but nothing for the Mid-South. So we will see the possibility of thunderstorms, and that's going to be about it. Rest of the forecast looking like this. Again, chances of showers and thunderstorms will be popping up from time to time. Hopefully not during the trek to school in the morning, but later on during the afternoon, there will be that potential of more thunderstorms coming up. Rest of the forecast, 
pretty well frighteningly similar as we go into the next several days. Temperatures dropping by just a little bit into and around the area of this next midweek and onwards because we're going to be looking for much more in the way of showers and thunderstorms. So extra clouds, extra rainfall, that might shelter us from the sunshine a little bit. It's still going to be pretty steamy out there, though, with temperatures back into the mid to upper 70s at this time. Amy Autry, anything severe tomorrow? Doesn't look like it. There could be, again, those borderline strong to severe storms, but the odds are that we're not going to be seeing anything uh, out there in the way of severe weather, at least for right now, so definitely some good news on that. 92 in Shelby, Prof, uh, Brian De Professor Hill, welcome to the show. Thank you very much uh, for that one at this point in time. So again, up to date with more about what's going on in the Mid-South area with temperatures, again, steamy and not all that great for football practice outdoors and marching band. It will be tolerable, but once again, if you can see lightning and or hear thunder, a lot of people out there, and you can ask Dr. Marshall Shepard, past president of the American Meteorological Society. He was out golfing with people who said, oh, well, it's just thunder. We don't need to get off the golf course. When you think about where thunder comes from, yes, you do. So if you can hear thunder or see lightning, it's time to wrap up football practice, marching band, baseball, whatever you got going on, back indoors again for safety's sake. You do not want to risk the idea of going out again and getting caught by a lightning strike. So something, again, to think about that for right now. Cameron McNeil, a wet outdoor concert down at Snowden Grove in South Haven tomorrow afternoon. Uh, could be a possible problem. Hopefully nothing that's going to cause a postponement or a cancellation, but keep it tuned to News Channel 3 as we go into and around the area. Becky Metz, what's the percentage for tomorrow afternoon at Sardis Dam? Mainly, again, not great. We're looking at about maybe about uh, 20 to 30 percent coverage chance for most of the area. Again, isolated, spotty stuff out there, but the main thing is it's still possible. So for the entire Mid-South, that's what we're going to be looking for out there across much of the area. So that's something to keep an um, eye on there. Emma Williams, Forest City, again, same forecast, hot and humid with the isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours as well. And if anything does come close to turning severe again, keep it tuned to the weather experts and we'll keep you updated should anything like that happen. All right, switching gears into the tropics, the activity really ramped up this weekend. Nothing severe, serious out there and to the Atlantic with and a just a disturbance. It's just a depressed area in the atmosphere. It's not really much more than that, but again, we are monitoring this. National Hurricane Center watching this kind of wobble its way down to the southwest. That's significant in that it's going into this warmer water. That brick red color you see is very warm sea surface temperatures. Cooler water in the North Atlantic up here. If this goes farther southwest for a bit, it could strengthen and possibly get a name. It does not have a name yet. And if it does become a named storm, then again, we'll have to watch that a little bit more carefully to see what happens. But this thing is expected to boomerang back around to the northeast again as a new trough comes in, helps to guide that thing back out into the northern Atlantic. So this does not look to be a threat for the eastern U.S., the Caribbean, or the Gulf for right now. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3. We haven't even hit the peak of hurricane season yet, so we need to watch that very carefully. Now, if you're heading to the Hawaiian Islands, this is important because as of right now, we're watching for, again, some redevelopment here. Hector was a major hurricane. It is now a major hurricane again. Category 4, winds of 140 miles per hour. It's in the Pacific Ocean, and it's going to be coming very close to the Hawaiian Islands in the course of about the next week or so. It so far, does not look like a direct impact, but if you are heading this way or know someone who is, this is a storm you're going to have to monitor very carefully as it gets closer. Even if it doesn't make a direct impact, remember the winds going counterclockwise could push a lot of wind, a lot of surf problems, and again, a lot of rain and thunderstorms into this area as we go towards, say, next weekend and just right after that. So this is an important thing to watch. It looks like it's going to diminish diminish a little bit, maybe a Category 2 by about four to five days from now. But again, if you're heading to Hawaii or know anybody who is, this could be a very significant storm and could be a life-threatening one depending on what goes on. So we'll be monitoring
covering this as well. Keep it tuned to the National Hurricane Center and News Channel 3 for updates on that one. I'll keep you an idea on that one. Jen Hendricks Cobb, nothing severe for Bells, Tennessee. Does not look like it that way. Ashley McDonald, Hollyfield. How long until we get some snow? A long period of time. I think there's about um, 48 days in change, if I'm not mistaken, until the changeover just until autumn. So it's going to be a little ways from there uh, on that. Thanks to everybody else for tuning in. No burn bans in effect. For the Mid-South at this point, there are still four counties in southwest Arkansas, Nevada, Washita, Columbia, and Lafayette, still under burn bans east of areas of around Texarkana. That's the only burn bans in effect even close to the Mid-South. No burn bans in the state of Mississippi. Tennessee, again, does not issue burn bans unless on a large drought, significant wildfire risk basis. So there's nothing going on at this point. Definitely good news compared to what's going on out west. CBS News and News Channel 3 will keep track of that. Unfortunately, we've had reports of a seventh fatality out with those fires around portions of California and Oregon over the last few days, so keep up to date with more on that. Thanks to everybody for some great pictures. Just a sampling of some of them. Last of Dawn's, a nice view of sunset last night. Did not get a location on this one, but thank you very much. From our own photographer, Josh Strawn, from around Hernando, Mississippi. A beautiful view of some of the storms and sunset occurring at the same time. So thanks to Josh KJ5K, amateur radio operator, I'm assuming on that. And Fred Style 88, beautiful view from the Oxford, Mississippi area. Don't know if this was on the Ole Miss campus, but no filter required. Beautiful sunset on Saturday. So a great way to look at uh, one of God's artwork tonight. Yeah, again, last night in and around Oxford. So thank you, Fred Style 88, for that one. If you've got weather pictures, please. Please send them to me. I would love to feature them, but I can't show them if you don't send them, so you kind of see the problem that I'm working with there. If you have the opportunity to send them, again, aonic underscore WRG3 on Twitter, or you can send them to my email address, austin.onic at WRG.com. Jeffrey Allen Sagerson, when are we going to get rain in Brighton? Missed us again. Uh, anytime in the next few days, we'll be picking up some more showers and thunderstorms, so we st still have hope for some rainfall out there into and around the area for right now. Linda Shane Wilkinson, no rain in Bihalia at this point, but there could be more showers and thunderstorms in the next couple of hours, but widely scattered out there. Check in with my forecast on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And we'll keep you updated through what's left of the weekend. And I will be back online with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning on AM 730. Sports Chat Extraordinaire. You can follow them on Twitter at Talkback Live. And again, AM 730 in the Memphis metro area, outside the Memphis metro area, or wherever you happen to be tuning in from. All you have to do is dial them up online at TalkbackLiveNetwork.org. Tons of Sports Chat, lots of topics, some great guests on there. Uh, tune in again for some great information and, of course, my forecast available on there as well. Coming up here in just about 15 minutes or so, join me on my Facebook page, Twitter and Periscope, for an update on weather where the troops are. If you have friends or loved ones stationed overseas, we'll take a look at some areas around the world where American suit... Uh, service personnel, troops, and sailors may be out, out there. So again, if you have any friends or loved ones out there, we'll do our best to bring you some more information about that. If you have friends serving in the military, let me know where they are, and we'll give you the best information that we can from areas nearby where they may happen to be stationed. It's all public information, and we'll show you where you can get it on your computer system, and that'll be coming up here at about 8.35 later on tonight for more on that. Something on here you missed or you want to see more of, more climate data, more satellite pictures, whatever it is you're looking for, again, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Would love to know more about what it is you're looking for and bring you back for more information on weather overtime. We'll have more coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Jessica Gertler has all the day's news. Mike Sadie is in for the vacationing. Megan Rice with a busy day in sports. And, of course, yours truly. I'll have all the details on your forecast. That'll be tonight on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10, starting at just about 10 o'clock clock. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, and if you'd like to stick, stay up to date and stick around for more information, again, follow along here at wreg.com slash weather. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 on air and online into the first days of school for the fall semester of 2018.